Welcome to this video where I describe how you can configure the MySQL database with the Payara platform products. This video is part of the data sources video series, so have a look in the comment of this video for a link to the other videos in this series. If you are interested in the Postgres or Oracle database configuration, have a look at the other videos and the usage of the data sources, either the MySQL one or the other databases, is described with JPA and JDBC in other videos also. The preferred way for the configuration within Payara server is using the asadmin command line tool, because that is a scripted way and is uh, repeatable. You can also use, of course, the, the admin console, the graphical web application, to make it easier for you the first time you do this task. Another option is using the data source definition of the Jakarta EE specification. This is most suited for Payara Micro, but both options using the command line tools or the data source definition is possible with both versions of our product, Payara Server and Payara Micro. So let us start with Payara Server and see how you can configure the MySQL database. I have here installed the latest version of the Payara Server. It is a version 2020.7 and I have running the default domain one, which you can um, query uh, with the list domains commands of the is admin command line tool. First thing that we need to do is add the JDBC driver for the MySQL database to the Payara server installation. You can do this the, the easiest way by using the add library command where you define the current location of the jar file that you, uh, you have downloaded it from internet for your specific MySQL version that you are running. This add library command will add the jar file to the correct place so that it can be used by the server and your application. The next step is going to the admin console so that you can configure the MySQL database connection within the server. There is a specific JDBC option here on the resources where you can configure the connection pools. These are the two pools which are defined already by default uh, for the internal H2 database and for the EGB timers. But we are now going to create another pool for our installation. The installation of the MySQL database itself is not part of this video, of course, that, uh, that's something that you should look up within the documentation of the vendor. First thing is that you need to supply a name. For instance, I'm going to use the name Rubus Pool for my connection here. And it will be a simple data source definition. So I select the appropriate option in the dropdown. And by selecting here the vendor, I can already have the default options for the GDBC driver on the next screen. There are here other settings about the pools, like minimum and maximum connection pools in the pool, etc. I'm not going into details of that. Look at our documentation to find out the details about all the options. But as you can see, there is here now a long list of all the properties that you have for that JDBC driver. But of course, they have default values and most of them have default values and these are not required. So let's, let's remove them all and add the required properties, uh, the minimum required properties. Uh, the first one is the server name. It is the GNDI name. Uh, so it's the DNS name or the IP address where the MySQL database is running. 
the second option is the port number on which the instance of the database is listening. By default, it is 3306 for the MySQL database. I have created a specific database in my installation here so that I can use it and it's called Rubus again. So that's the next property that I'm going to specify. And then of course we need a username and password. The, user, the username is no surprise here, the same as the database. And I can specify the password here. I can do that in plain text, which is of course not a very useful option. So a better option is to use a password alias option that we have within the uh, Bayar server so that you can define it elsewhere and that it is stored encrypted within the environment and it will not show up here in the properties. So I can, for instance, define it as a Rubis password. So the password for the Rubis username and then I can define it um, on another screen, which I will do in a moment, but let's finish it with the plain password that I have defined here. I can finish this wizard and then I have created that Rubis pool. I can check if the connection to the database is okay and it is. Now that we have a connection pool, we need to create the GNDI name for that connection, as you remember, from the videos from the JPA and GDBC framework users, says we need a GNDI name. This can be done here with the JDBC resources screen where I define a new GNDI name, for instance, JDBC my local MySQL database. And it is linked to that pool that I have created once I confirm this then this GNDI name is available within my application. To define then the password alias, you go to the domain tab, password aliases here, and you can define here that Rubus password, and you can specify the password that it will hold, eh? the value that the alias will hold. And now you can use that Rubis password alias as I have shown you before. Using the admin console as we did for creating the MySQL connection is of course a good way if you need to learn Payara, because then you can see graphically what is required and how you can do it. The downside of course is that you can make errors that uh, you need that user interface and that errors can easily be made in typos uh, in the uh, name of the server or um, the name of the user, for instance. So a better option is then to use a script that can be launched with the asadmin command line tool, which does the same thing as we have done in the graphical way just earlier on in this video. This looks a lot of commands that you need to know and to learn, but you can always use the enable as admin recorder uh, when you do it uh, in the admin console and then a similar script as this one will be generated and you can adapt it or you can use it as such so that it will be reusable and better suited for your environment. So let's go over the main parts here again. Uh, we first create the connection pool itself with the create GDBC connection pool where we specify the MySQL data source which is uh, located within the GDBC driver of MySQL that we added to the server. We specify the type, uh, in this case it is uh, a default data source and we give the connection pool a name, in this case a Rubus pool again. And then we define each properties, uh, the, the five properties for the pool, just as we did on the UI. And that means that we can launch the asadmin set command, where we say for a JDBC connection pool 
called Rubus pool, we define the, prop the property, um, server name, port number, database name, the user and password, just as we did on the screen. Again, here we can define the alias construct so that the password is not vis visible in plain text here and that it will be picked up from the environment and that it is stored safely there uh, without um, being able to be used by someone else. So let us start executing these commands. The first is the create of the pool. It is executed successfully. In the second step, we can um, put those five properties on the pool name they are all executed okay, so the syntax is correct. And then the last test that we need to do is to ping the JDBC, uh, to ping the database through that JDBC driver. And this time it is also successful. So that means our configuration is done correctly for that connection pool. The next thing that we need to do is create a GNDI name. So that can be done by using the create JDBC resource command, where we specify a GNDI name for our connection pool. In this case, the JDBC slash local dash MySQL is the GNDI name. And we define it for the pool, Rubus pool that we have created just before with those other commands. The GNDI name needs to be made available to the correct instance and it can be a deployment group a standalone instance or in this case the server so we specify here target server for a create resource reference where we say that this GNDI name can be referenced from the server where we in this demo case have um, deployed our application again executing these commands um, and then you see that all those are also executed successfully, which means that now the GNDI name is available within JPA or JDBC. So now that we have explored the possibilities with Payara Server, let's switch to Payara Micro. With Payara Micro, you can use the same options as we discussed with Payara Server, so creating the connection pool and the GNDI name. If you are interested in doing that, then have a look at our documentation for Payara Micro for the boot scripts. You have the post boot command file, and there you can put the information that we have discussed during the Payara server creation for creating a connection pool. You can put that in that post boot command file. And then when Payara Micro starts up, then the connection pool and the GNDI name is created. But maybe there is an easier way with um, using the data source definition option of the Jakarta EE specification. So again, I have here a simple application which um, are using the Jakarta EE APIs. And then I can define a the database connection with the data source definition. There is also the possibility to define it in WebXML that I will show you in a minute. So we put here more or less the same information as we did with the connection pool creation. And so we create the, uh, we def define the class name uh, for the um, driver for the MySQL data source in, in this case. And then we need to specify, again, those five values for the properties. Again, hard-coded values are possible, but even less recommended here, uh, because this is source, uh, this is part of your source code. So that will be put in a code repository so that everyone can see there the password, uh, especially if that code repository is publicly available. The alliance option um, 
is not suited here for uh, Payara Micro uh, because we do not have that option here uh, with, with Micro to create, but we have an option to use the Micro Profile Config specification to read some values from an external resource uh, file, uh, for example. So the server name, um, the database name, the username, and um, the password uh, are now specified externally um, by using a similar construct as with that Elias, but now with the prefix mpconfig. And the last thing that, of course, that we need to do is define a GNDI name. Now we need to define the name in the global namespace, so in a, an other area of the GNDI dream. But we can specify here the, um, the name as java global slash gdbc slash local mysql. Since it is in an other part, be aware that with the add resource annotation, you need to use the lookup member and not uh, the name member as we saw before. If you do not like to have it in the um, code itself with an annotation, you can also use the WebXML to create your um, data source. Again, the same information is required here. The MySQL data source class that needs to be used, the five properties and the GNDI name. We can specify the properties in a file, uh, microprofile.properties here, but again, that name can be anything as we will refer it on the command line when we start the Payara Micro. And here again, the five values that you are familiar with to connect to my local MySQL database. Now that our application is properly configured for the database using that data source definition, then this is the corresponding command that you can use to start the Payara Micro with that application and with all the elements required for the configuration. And so we start up Payara Micro with uh, the minus jar option of Java, linking to the jar file of Payara Micro. We also specify the property at libraries, where we specify where the MySQL connector can be found. We specify with the minus system properties the file with the connection information for the database and then as the last thing that we need to define is of course our application itself when we launch this the um, the payara micro will find all the required uh, pieces and we can connect our application with the mysql database as specified uh, in the parameters of this properties file. So in this demo, we saw how you can configure the connection to the MySQL database and how you can define that GNDI name that you need for using it with the JPA or the JDBC framework. We saw various options, uh, how to do it with Payara server and Payara micro uh, using the admin console, the command line tool for the data source definition of the Jakarta um, specification. Thank you for watching this video. As mentioned already before, have a look at the other videos and um, hopefully I see you again. Bye.